that, and thank you everybody for coming. I know that uh, some of you came from down the street, and some of you came from down the planet, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful to be with friends, it's also wonderful to tackle uh, this uh, subject, which I believe is, is, is the main transformer of an entire industry around which the entire planet revolves. Everything we care about uses electrons. Without electrons, there's no civilization. So it seems very apropos that, as a group, we're tackling the evolution of an industry that, frankly, has been fairly stable since Thomas Edison's been around. The agenda we've structured today tries to touch on the various issues that are driving the transformation of the energy uh, industry in the 21st century. Um, I'll give a very short keynote, followed by Thomas, who's going to discuss um, the challenges the industry faces disrupting and innovating from the inside, disrupting itself. Um, then we'll have a panel of leaders, uh, Dr. Tyson, Frank Calabria from Origin, and I'll be the, the spoiler from the IT industry that'll be moderated by Stephen Camello from Stanford uh, Graduate School of Business. That will set the stage and the theme for how the leadership of the energy industry is really thinking through how to push the paradigm uh, in, into a data-driven one. Um, that will be followed by a panel moderated by Florian Kolb, who's the Managing Director of uh, Energy New Ventures in Silicon Valley, uh, and it'll have uh, investment executives, strategic investment executives from um, the various companies um, that are really at the tip of the spear of strategic investment in this area, followed by a panel that I'll moderate called The Unlikely Entrepreneurs about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship you know, the seeds of innovation that are creating the ideas and the technologies that can be adopted by energy companies and their partners to really uh, construct um, internet data-driven uh, businesses. Uh, that will be followed um, by a panel on privacy and regulation. Uh, the minute you start touching data, you have to start getting very, very careful about consumer rights, about privacy, about enterprise policy, and so on and so forth. The 20th century, you touched radioactive material to make electricity in a nuclear reactor. In a data platform, the data on consumers is radioactive and has to be managed the way you manage radioactive material um, in, in a nuclear energy situation. We have uh, some experts from the privacy world, from the technology privacy world, from the regulator uh, world. That panel will be moderated by my, my dear friend and colleague Thomas Sander, who's the, the uh, data privacy officer for InterTrust. Um, then we'll talk about renewable energy and data-driven renewable energy. That will be kicked off by uh, a, a short presentation by uh, Tony Lucas, uh, who's the head of new energy at Origin, followed by a, a panel of experts uh, from renewability and from data. And then we'll take a break. There'll be um, a keynote by Seki-san. Uh, Tepco is a company, that obviously the largest energy company in Japan, electricity company in Japan. Um, they have the largest footprint in the Tokyo area. Obviously, they've been in the news um, dealing with some, some issues related to uh, the nuclear reactor incident there. And they're very, very aggressively innovating themselves um, to, 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 to transform not only TEPCO, but transform the entire Japanese energy economy around new business models. And Seki-san will share his thoughts on that. And then finally, we'll close. Most importantly, there's a very nice cocktail party with some jazz afterwards, and we invite everybody to stick around and enjoy. The weather, I think, is going to be perfect in the evening. Beautiful views of the Rhine. Um, I'd like to, before I sort of get into my presentation, just thank all the folks who helped bring us here and make this um, such a wonderful event. This is a great venue. It bridges um, the last century and this century. We're in a beautiful location that's really not only at the heart of the German energy transformation, but the global energy transformation, Germany is really a shining light. The world is, is, uh, is emulating um, in, in the energy space, but we're also at the heart of uh, the, the original industrial revolution. It was here where the original coal mines were dug, the original generators were made, the original steel mills were built, the autobahns, the rail lines. People have been innovating here for a very, very long time. And uh, I hope that everybody leaves today with some good ideas that will help influence what they do um, in the course of their careers and their jobs as we work together to drive this new industrial revolution. So 
I'm going to give a short presentation to set the stage. Um, the, this is uh, the, the Three Graces by uh, Raphael. Um, so I was thinking, what are the three graces of, of the 21st century energy industry? One is renewables. The second is deregulation. And the third is the internet. These are disruptive forces. I mean, they're good and bad, but they, they sort of came about uh, for a variety of reasons, but are really, really driving uh, energy companies to really have to disrupt themselves. Um, utility revenues today and EBIT are at risk because of these three factors. Um, that's simultaneously a crisis and a threat, but it's also an opportunity. For those who are curious, the Chinese in the background is a Chinese saying that says, turn crisis into opportunity which in, in the West is often conflated uh, with, you know, the Chinese have the same word for threat and opportunity. But obviously when you're being disrupted, you have two choices. One is to sit down and let the market take its route. The other is do something about it. Pick up the trends, seize the day, take the opportunity. Um, so we're living in this, this age where there's a massive transformation that's taking place that's shifting entire value chains. Uh, renewables and decentralized energy are challenging the, exist the existing model. The, 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 the grip, the differentiator, the, th the high barrier to entry from making electricity to distributing it to, to maintaining large retail infrastructure is now being attacked by these disruptive forces. We posit that data-driven players can enter new markets much more effectively, much more efficiently um, in the face of this. A lot of the incumbents in these markets are playing defense. They own and control a lot of data assets that they sometimes don't even know about. These data assets are the fuel for data-driven energy business models. Now, at the heart of this is this new plumbing that's coming about. People hear these buzzwords all the time, but it's real. IoT and related big data processing systems can really help utilities engage and understand their customers better than anything that's come this way before. This allows us to create virtual power plants, uh, home smart home systems, home energy management, peer-to-peer -peer trading. Electric vehicles are, are not only creating new demand for electricity, but completely disrupting the, 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 the cousins in the, in, the, in the auto industry, and on and on and on. The energy industry of yesterday is being transformed by the internet. When I first met Florian in 2015, we, we got into this dialogue that spanned the practical to the philosophical, and, and he said, how do we harness um, the internet uh, to, to great effect in our industry? And I said, well, when an electron is consumed, you create information. I mean, today, an energy company spends a lot of money making electricity and delivering it to a Google data center. It costs a lot of money to make and move and sell electricity. Google takes those electrons and burns them. They turn them into information. They run a much higher margin business. Why not try to move up into the data value chain? Um, and this was effectively the basis of um, the data-driven business thinking around uh, what we've been doing with our colleagues at Energy for the last few years and more recently with our colleagues at Origin. Looking at energy through the data-driven lens allows optimization of current operations. It allows increased customer engagement. It allows a utility to become a platform service provider. It opens all sorts of opportunities to participate in new products and build new products, assuming, of course, the cultures adapt to engage and take advantage of this. And ultimately, it gives a utility or an energy company the tools it needs to build new partnerships with adjacent businesses and obviously compete more effectively with people who are moving in. Now, all of this is great, except the internet also lowers barrier to entry. And we may not be the only people in the room who have these ideas. Say hello to your new best friends. Amazon, Google, Apple, even Facebook, even Uber are all masters of the data game. They're all masters of the internet. And they all see opportunity in moving into these businesses. Let's go back to deregulation. It's very easy for someone today to go get electrons wholesale and then build a new business model around it themselves. 
These new entrants are playing for energy dollars, and no one should make a mistake of thinking that's not the case. Attackers, and I, I mean business attackers, are hungry for user data. These companies need data to live. These companies need data to grow. Um, I often joke that Mark Zuckerberg is my best marketing asset. Every time he opens his mouth, we get more demand for our privacy management technology. Um, the way that these companies get data is they lure users into giving data by using resources like mail and search and, and social networks and so on and so forth, often for free. Um, they could use free electrons to gather data, as I was saying earlier. Competing utilities, and by the way, this applies to telcos as well, anyone who owns and maintains a network, um, will have to deal with the fact that these folks are chipping away at the revenue ways. And apropos my point earlier about partnerships, people should be very weary of, hey, man, I want to be your friend. Let's get our stuff together. Just use some of this and let's go. Because the new entrants into these markets have much more sophisticated ways of getting inside a utilities business and energy companies business and drawing the data they need out to grow. Now, the good news is energy companies have the fire power to counterattack. There's financial headroom. Um, despite what the analysts say, an energy company still generates tremendous amounts of money, and that money should be put to good use in terms of transformation and adaptation. There's a very strong customer base and very strong trust relationships with customers. I trust my energy company not to light my house on fire, although in California that, that's no longer a, an assurance these days, but uh, let's pretend I live in Germany. Um, and of course, there's a tremendous amount of know-how in terms of trading and supplying electrons. Um, this isn't something that's going to go away overnight, but it is the basis of leverage that can be used to judo flip ourselves into this new age. Energy companies really have to grab their data by the horns and use it for strategic leverage. Um, using data drawn from the user base and IoT devices, energy companies can play the same game. They can run leaner, smarter operations. They can build new value-added horizontal services. They can build data-driven products and deploy them. And this is a very important point globally. Because while where you can send electricity is limited by things like Ohm's law, you can send data anywhere on the planet. You can run code and apps anywhere on the planet. So the intellectual property that's developed by energy companies in this new age can translate into literally platforms that can be licensed across the planets to like-minded friends and partners. This is a phenomenal opportunity to take the know-how that's living inside an energy company and project it and create very high value, high margin businesses for yourselves all over the planet. Now let's look at how this impacts the different pieces of an energy company. Renewables. Go back to the three graces. Go back to renewable energy. In the old days, it was very hard to build a nuclear reactor. Today, any of us can strap a bunch of solar cells on top of our building, get a storage battery, and we're off to the races. That opens up all sorts of interesting opportunities. Now, I come from Silicon Valley. I spent a lot of time working in the entertainment industry. We watched the music and film industry fall prey to BitTorrent and Napster. These are called peer-to-peer -peer networks. We see opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer distributed renewable energy that generates a lot of data that needs to be managed, needs to be kept safe, uh, but that forms the basis of the next disruptive step in renewability. Uh, the technology stack is complicated, it's hard to make work, but if you do it right, one can create virtual utilities on top of highly distributed networks of renewable energy. Retail. In the old days, an electron was sent to a building and that was it. The most you knew was what you saw in the meter, or maybe you did some statistical analysis. Today, an energy company can and must reach through the meter to touch every device in the house. And that's possible with IoT. Moreover, if you use the right privacy data management platform, I'm not saying become Facebook. Moreover, with the right behavioral profiling technologies done in a private way, you can understand what your customers are doing when they're not even in the house. And that will help you optimize and model and trade and deliver much, much more efficiently. Now, your competition, 
basically freeload on data networks today. Netflix does not own one piece of fiber or copper, yet I think they're the largest source of internet traffic in the world. Um, too bad for Verizon and AT&T. Um, be careful not to have that happen with grids. Um, but again, energy companies can play in the smart home game. They don't have to make devices. They don't have to make um, apps. They can partner with people. But they do need to be in a position of strategic leadership, picking the right partners, building the right technology. That transforms retail. Finally, uh, trading and grid. Trading is based on arbitrage. Arbitrage is a data business. The person with the best data wins. It's not just about having the best data, it's having the best data at the, at the right time. This is a function, or will be a function, of how good your data platforms are and where you get your data from, obviously uh, in a way that's consistent with all the regulations that people have to live around. Energy companies also have to harness new data sources to empower trading. If, 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 if there's anything we've learned from Facebook and Google, it's that the derivatives of data sets, which are data sets themselves, are more informative than the data itself. You don't have to probe a single event. You can probe a bunch of correlated events and make inferences based on those that are as good or better. So you've got to think outside the box to better inform uh, trading decisions. And obviously, this also impacts the way you design, manage, and, and optimize grids. Uh, and we have a, an incredibly exciting project going on with uh, energy uh, in a wholly owned subsidiary they have called Digiku that literally does that. We, we created together a data platform that assimilates data, not only from all 800 plus DSOs in Germany, but also all sorts of weather and demographic and atmospheric data that allows a grid planner in Germany to have laser sharp insights into what's under their feet and what the transformer can take and who's most likely to buy an electric car next on the street, all sitting behind a laptop or an iPad. Um, Ultimately, data acquisition is to the person who runs the fastest and smartest, but it's also to the person who understands privacy and competition law the best. As I said earlier, this stuff's radioactive. You can't just play around with it. You've got to manage it in, in environments that are sensitive to the, the importance of, of, of the assets you're analyzing. What are the Lego blocks you need? Well, you need a secure data rights management platform. I just talked about that. You can't just throw all your data into a big bucket and hope for the rest. There'll be data breaches. There'll be misappropriation of data. Even innocent uses of data may be uh, not so innocent and could, could get people into trouble with, with the various authorities have to deal with GDPR and things like that. You need secure systems. Every day you open the newspaper, you hear about a hack of some sort somewhere. But if you imagine an entire country, or an entire continent, or an entire planet where everything from a computer to a car to a light bulb to a switch to a baby camera is networked, knowing that you can trust those devices, which are pretty much at the edge, at the fingertips of the system, they're going to bring the information in, knowing that you can trust these, knowing that it's really a baby camera, not some guy in Belarus pretending he's a baby camera, that's hyper important and very often ignored uh, by the people building these systems because they're very focused on, on the data and the cloud. But these, these systems are only as good as the weakest link, and the weakest link is often at the fingertips. And then finally, you need the smarts. You need the monetization technologies, the value exchange technologies. And we at Intertrust are also big believers in open standards. On the one hand, you have large monopolistic ecosystems that may look open. All slaves are equal as long as they live on the plantation and don't leave. On the other hand, you have uh, people who want to work together to really create open cooperative ecosystems. And the only way to really do that between energy companies and consumer electronics companies and automakers and so on and so forth is to agree on what's 220 volts, 50 hertz for data. And that was the essence of electricity in the beginning. If every power plug had different voltage, there'd be no interoperability. There'd be no ability to make hair dryers and TVs. We need to do that cooperating with each other for this space. Um, just very quickly on privacy, because we have a panel on that. These, these are two of my favorite cartoons from The New Yorker. They're 20 years apart. Um, 
On the left, um, this was at the beginning of PCs and web browsers, two dogs. One dog says, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. And I, I used this slide last week in Tokyo for a completely different purpose, but you know, the idea was that you can do anything you wanted on the internet, you were completely anonymous. Well, that led to a, a million problems. 20 years later, the dog says, remember when on the internet no one knew you were a dog? We're being profiled every time we pick up our phones, every time we order something from a shop online. That's not good. And Europe in general, and Germany in particular, are really at the forefront of trying to put the genie back in the bottle. GDPR is now being emulated around the planet, and despite what you may hear about GDPR being an impediment to business, we believe it's enabling to business. It is the beginning of a new phase where we will handle data, trade data, create economies of data in a regulated way, which is the essence of community government civilization. So it, it's, a, it's, it's actually a tremendously exciting time. And may actually force some of these big guys we're talking about to slow down a little bit because they're going to have to retool everything they're doing and also change their cultures too. So it's a leveling event. The conference today tries to hit all of these themes. We've, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, we brought our leadership together to discuss uh, the view from the top and the strategic outlook. We have innovators here. We have entrepreneurs here. We have the people funding entrepreneurship here. We have regulators. And ultimately, we have people who are going to talk about how renewability takes us into the next era. And uh, I'd like to wish everybody a good day. And please feel free to ask questions. And don't be shy and stop the speakers. Um, and, and think. Think about everything you hear. And please, uh, let's work together to make things uh, better. Thank you. <laughs>